here in America. Dozens of people were killed in an attack on a crowd of Palestinians waiting for aid in Gaza City, according to health officials. We want to warn you that some of the video we're about to show you may be extremely disturbing, according to Israeli Defense Forces. Residents surrounded an aid truck and looted the supplies. The IDF says people were injured amid the pushing and trampling. However, an Israeli government source tells NBC News the crowd approached IDF troops in a manner that posed a threat, so they responded with live fire. The source says the incident is under review. This comes as U.S. officials tell Axios the Biden administration is considering airdropping more aid into Gaza because land deliveries are becoming increasingly difficult. Joining us now, independent Senator Angus King of Maine. He is a member of the Senate Armed Services and Intelligence Committees. Senator, thank you so much for coming on the show this morning. Um, how do you assess uh, uh, the Israeli approach uh, to the war at this point? President Biden has called the response over the top at one point, but yet Netanyahu seems so defiant about moving forward with this war um, in a devastating manner for Palestinians. At what point is this going to become an international problem, but also a political problem for President Biden? Well, I want to I want to talk about the exactly what you raise is, is the conduct of the war. I was in a meeting in uh, in, in uh, Tel Aviv, not I think about six weeks ago, eight weeks ago with Benjamin Netanyahu. I, I looked him in the eye and said, uh, I believe that the bombing campaign is counterproductive. It It is for whatever damage it's doing to Hamas, it's doing more damage to Israel and to Israel's standing in the world, uh, to world opinion. And, and I think that's, it's, it, nobody questions, I don't think, many people question uh, Israel's right to defend itself against terrorism. Right. On the other hand, the manner in which it's being done, that's the problem. And that's why uh, I'm uh, releasing a letter this morning to the White House to bring a hospital ship to Gaza to try to break through some of what yeah. you talk about, about the difficulty of getting support to the Palestinian people. Senator, good morning. Let me ask you more about that idea. That we should point out the idea to bring the naval ship in from the water has drawn the support of Admiral Stavridis, our friend and uh, military analyst here on NBC News. So what would that look like different from the trucks getting in? Obviously, the concern always has been that Hamas loots all of the aid, keeps it for itself, and it doesn't get into the hands of the people who need it. How would a Navy ship sort of remedy that? Well, the whole idea is to is to cut through some of the complications, and the problem is uh, there are these the border crossings. There are checkpoints and other checkpoints, and trucks have to be unloaded and then reloaded. And then there are the problems when they get to the to the border of Gaza. We're trying to uh, uh, Jack Reed and I are suggesting this is a way to cut through this and to get the aid directly. And we're talking now about really two pieces. One is a hospital ship. Uh, Hamas does in fact hide underneath hospitals and civilian infrastructure. This is a way to get urgently needed medical support to people. The ship is offshore. Uh, there would be shuttles back and forth. And, and that the French are already doing this. It's proving effective. We have greater capability. And it's something I, I got the idea from Admiral Stravitas. He wrote an article about this. And I think this is this just makes sense. Uh, combined, and it may be airlifts, but the problem is that there's the, there, there's too many complications. There's one other important point about this, Willie, that hasn't really gotten much play. In most war zones, the civilians leave. Syria, right. they left. They and, it, and in Ukraine, millions went over into Poland. In this case, mm -hmm. they can't leave for a couple of reasons. Hamas won't let them leave. They're, they're, they're being sort of trapped by this uh, terrorist organization. But also on the border, you showed the map a minute ago, the southern border of Gaza borders Egypt. Egypt is literally building a wall to keep the Palestinian refugees out of Egypt to keep them trapped in Gaza. So that's one of the things that really complicates this situation is the civilians have nowhere to go. And and we've got to try to cut through that. And that's why I think a hospital ship is one way to do it. Another is to bring aid in by the sea, to stage it on Cyprus or someplace nearby, and then bring the aid in one container ship 
can carry as many as 800 truckloads of supplies which are desperate and we just have to figure out how to get them there and the airlift is another idea and and but that that's the problem we've got to cut through these blockages at the border and get them to the people that need it yeah it's a question we've been asking for about four months now what about egypt and as you point out egypt shows no interest in accepting the refugees in fact building a wall there let me ask you about the policy president Biden signaled a few days ago before that michigan vote that a ceasefire a temporary ceasefire could be imminent uh, a break of several weeks to get this humanitarian aid in quickly israel and hamas both said i don't really know what he's talking about there's not going to be a ceasefire given the conditions israel says that hamas is asking for here so you've got voters in michigan and across the united states saying we want a permanent ceasefire that's a non-starter obviously what is something reasonable to expect a pause perhaps to get at least the aid in before the fighting resumes well i think maybe a, the steps toward a ceasefire is is one way to go the, for the Israelis to, to back off on the bombing campaign, for example, and then Hamas backs off. Another thing that hasn't been publicized, uh, since October 7th, Hamas has fired something on the order of 15,000 rockets into civilian areas of Israel. Now, Israel fortunately has an air defense system, the Iron Dome, that has prevented damage from most of those rockets. But, uh, okay, so stop the bombing, stop the rockets, and then you work toward the release of the hostages messages and then work toward a permanent ceasefire. I'm for a ceasefire, but it's got to apply to both sides. You can't just have one side of a conflict say, well, I'm not going to fight anymore. And Hamas says, well, we're going to keep firing rockets and arming and uh, building tunnels and all the things that they're doing. So uh, a ceasefire, I think we could step into it through a process of for first, the Israelis backing off on the bombing campaign, which, as I said, I think is doing more harm than good. And then mm -hmm. that could open the opportunity for a back off by the by Hamas. And then perhaps we can move to release of hostages and some democratic, uh, um, I'm sorry, some uh, diplomatic solution, which is exactly what ultimately has to happen. Donny Deutsch, um, I, I, I want to bring you in. You can take a question to the senator if you'd like, but I, I'm just curious because, um, you know, the concept of uh, bringing this hospital ship to help uh, the, these poor civilians um, and a lot of other options are coming from the U.S., right? Uh, decisions here that President Biden has to make and President Biden has to push for and what President Biden <clears throat> needs to do to help end this war and get the hostages home. And he should do everything that he can do. But is there a decision here for Israel as well? Um, when everybody talks about President Biden's going to lose the Arab vote, he's going to lose the, the youth vote because of uh, his position with Israel or because of how this war is being conducted, Israel depends on its partnership with the United States of America. Doesn't Israel need the youth vote and the Arab vote and support from America just, just as much? Yes, let me also make a point that <clears throat> Hamas does not want a ceasefire, and I think that's been right. proven time and time again. And Israel is losing a communications. You started off this piece where it was showing the carnage in Gaza, and that's all young people see. Young people today, as far as all the, if you talk to young people on college campuses, they're being accosted if in any way they're pro-Israel. Um, it, they've lost the entire narrative with young people. And I'm going to put something out there that may seem very, very controversial because I, I think there needs to be a reset. If I was Israel and I wanted to kind of take back some of the narrative, there was a 47 minute film that I saw and a few people saw. Most Israel has not released it because uh, out of respect to the families. And what it was was footage that the IDF took from the terrorists that showed the raping and the, 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 the destruction and the beheading and the killing of babies and the burning of babies and the jubilation that these terrorists showed as they called their mothers to say they killed Jews with their bare hands. And as we saw a Jewish corpse be dragged through the streets and the Gazans cheering, <clears throat> this is all a response that that footage needs to be shown. Yeah. There needs to be a marker in history. Yeah. Just like the footage of the Holocaust was a marker in history. Yes, Israel would love a ceasefire, but Israel needs to take out Hamas. And if they don't take them out, this will happen again. Young people need to see that. That needs to be put in front of every 
person on this planet. Yes, Israel is responding, but let's put a marker in history of what these savages have done and what now is a response to it. Senator King, off of what uh, Donnie <clears throat> just pointed out, the brutality, the brutality, the savagery of what took place on October 7th, I would like to th for you to think about that for a second and then take us back to the meeting you had with Netanyahu in Tel Aviv a few weeks ago. In the interim, after October 7th, Israel began the following week by dropping 2,000 pound bombs on one of the most congested areas on earth, Gaza. Over 30,000 people have been killed, largely Palestinian, in Gaza, many of them children, with American munitions, largely, during that period of time. So today, well, when you were meeting with President Netanyahu, Prime Minister Netanyahu, what was his response to your suggestion to him that uh, he, they're overdoing it, Israel is overdoing it in terms of the bombing and, their, and the way they've approached this war? What was his suggestion? Uh, what was his response? And do you think <clears throat> that Netanyahu, we have an ally or a foe? Well, I think his response was a, uh, a, a, a kind of stony non-response. He listened. Uh, I wasn't the only one there. There were other members of, of the Senate that were there who all made the same point. And one of the points that was made was uh, that he, Israel is losing a generation of potential supporters, that, that the, the, uh, the support for Israel is eroding, particularly among young people in the country, because they are seeing those images, and Israel has gone about this in such a uh, sort of heavy-handed, uh, regardless of the consequences, way, and, and that's, he, he didn't have much of a response. He just, he just sort of sat there and listened. Uh, the meeting went for, I, I don't know, better part of an hour, more more than an hour, and this was the point that was made. In fact, I said exactly what Donnie just said. I said, I said, uh, Mr. President, you're, you may be winning the ground war, and I'm not even sure of that, but you're certainly losing the information war, and and I think that's a that's a big part of it. Now, the other piece of this, though, is. I'm hearing a little rumblings of, of the of Gaza, of Palestinians in Gaza who are starting to talk about, well, wait a minute, Hamas got us into this, and think of the money that Hamas built. They could have used hundreds of millions of dollars that have come into Gaza over the past 20 years to build a, a, a an amazing society on the Mediterranean Sea. Instead, they built tunnels. Those tunnels, if they were straightened out, would go from Washington to Boston. I mean, that's where they've stolen the money of the Palestinian people to turn Gaza into a fortress and then the basis for offensive weapons. So this is, this this is a really complicated situation, but to go back to the beginning, one thing that's not complicated is there are people that need help. There are innocent civilians yes. in Gaza that need help, and we've got to figure out how to, how to cut through all of the checkpoints and all of that kind of thing to get the help that they need. And to me, Admiral Strafidis, as he usually does, has it right. Let's bring a ship in there that can provide badly needed medical supplies and medical help on the ship to get away from the whole idea of whether or not it's a hospital that's hiding Hamas, and we can make a difference in those people's lives. Plus, we can say, hey, the U.S. really does care about this. We're not just standing by and handing the keys to this whole thing to Benjamin Netanyahu. We're going to be sure mm -hmm. people get help that they ought to uh, at a, in a timely way. Independent Senator Angus King of Maine, thank you so much for coming on this morning. We really appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you, sir.